Welcome to Uncover. And this is the first step in the Giving It Up in Six Steps program. So whether you're giving up a habit or an addiction, a person, a belief, this Uncover is that first step towards it. And all you're going to do at this stage of the program is just take stock. You're going to have a look at the situation. You're going to see how often you do the habit, in what circumstances, and really just trying to understand what it is and having an idea about the role that it's playing in your life. So you may be thinking now, well, I've already given it up or I've already taken steps to lessen and that's absolutely fine. I don't want you to then go back and say, right, I'm going to do it again. But if you haven't or if you found that your subconscious is fighting back now and you're doing it more, this is a time really to look at what's happening and to be really, really honest with yourself and really aware so that you're completely clued up really about exactly what this habit is and what it represents right now. And you may have already kind of sectioned out how long you're going to spend on each step. So you may have decided you'll, temp, you'll spend a week on this, or you may have decided you'll spend a month, or you might be working through. But I would imagine that this will take you probably at least a week to look at what these patterns are. And you may be thinking, well, I already know, I already know exactly how much I do this habit, but um, sometimes when we actually start making notes and we actually start keeping a diary, it's different to how we imagined it. And that can be for many reasons. So if you think about it, if you're, if this is a habit that you're trying to hide from people, it may be that when somebody's asking how often, how much, you're giving them a different figure. And that means that in your mind, you're almost believing that different figure. So there's a denial that takes place in your own mind, as well as the information that you're giving to other people. Or you might find the opposite. And you've been really hard on yourself when you've thought about how much this habit is taking over your life. So it may be that when you start keeping the diary, you realize that it's not as bad as you anticipated. So being aware of keeping this diary, noting down whenever you do the habit, just kind of, you know, making a very brief note to see exactly how much but also looking at the when. So looking at any patterns that come up. So is it worse at certain times of day? Is it worse in certain situations? Is it worse in around certain people? So really keeping a, a diary and looking for these patterns will help you to discover a lot more about this habit and the role it has in your life. And along with the whens and the whos and the hows, also think about what feelings this brings up. So think about how you feel. Think about how you were feeling before the habit or before you engaged in the habit. Thinking about how you felt during and how you felt after. So thinking about all these feelings that come up. And this may be something that you haven't really spent any time considering. And that's quite normal. So don't worry, don't think, oh, well, I should have done this before. We don't tend to really spend a lot of time really digging into how we feel. And we certainly don't normally think about the before, during and after. But the reality is this habit may be bringing a certain feeling. It may be that you feel um, great during it, or it may be that you feel awful during it and that it's not giving you anything anymore. It may be that you feel great afterwards. It may be that you feel deep shame and upset afterwards. So 
thinking about these feelings helps you to understand the steps that are coming into place during the time you're engaging in this habit. And it's really important to remember that at its very beginning, every habit and indeed every behavior, everything we engage in has a positive intent. And that positive intent may be forgotten. It may be that the reason that this started has been lost very much in the past and that the habit is completely not necessary anymore. Or it could be that that positive intent and the benefits it gives you is still very present. So by really understanding your feelings around this habit helps you to understand the process of that habit and what role it gives you in your life right now. And as part of this six step process, I'm going to be adding a guided self hypnosis session to every step. So this is an offer. It's not something that you have to do as part of the program. But if you choose to do these guided self hypnosis sessions, you'll find the benefits from them. So you'll find that it'll be really beneficial to helping you with that final giving it up for good. So this will be included, but really don't feel that you have to do every guided self hypnosis or any is just something that's part of this six steps program. The next part of this video is designed to put you into a relaxed state. So do not listen to this whilst driving or operating machinery. So make yourself nice and comfy. You may choose to stop this video now and go and find blankets or cushions or anything you need to be nice and comfortable for the entirety of this guided self hypnosis session. So um, I'll let you do that. Make yourself nice and comfortable and then we can start. So the self hypnosis session or meditation with Uncover is all about helping you to self-soothe, helping you to calm and balance your nervous system. And the reason this is the first step is because your habit might be playing this role in some ways for you. So it may be playing a self-soothing role within your life. So in order to give that up, Adding things like meditation, which help to balance and calm, is a really good way of replacing that or allowing your subconscious to get into a place where it can let it go. Also, you may be feeling some level of anxiety around giving up. So this will help alleviate that anxiety. It's designed to be very calming, very balancing, and it uses the kind of imagery of nature along with polyvagal theory in order to create that sense of calm and balance. So we start by taking a deep breath in and then slowly letting that breath out. Deep breath in and then very slowly letting it out. And then without changing the position of your head, so without looking down or to the left or to the right, just let your eyes move. And first, you're going to let your eyes face downwards. So you're just going to let them go down like this. And hold that for a couple of breaths. And then you're going to bring your eyes over to the left. So again, keeping that head in a nice comfortable position, but stretching your eyes across to almost sort of the three o'clock position. And then you're going to bring your eyes to the other side. And then looking to that other side, taking those few breaths. And then let your eyes, again, be very careful not to bring your head up, but let your eyes look upwards. 
And with those eyes looking upwards, you're going to take a deep breath in and then slowly let it out. And then just allow your eyes to return to comfortable position. And as they do, you'll probably have a big urge to close them and just allow them to do so. Just allow those eyes to close giving your body what it's needing and enjoying that sense of calm that comes from those closed eyes, enjoying that sense of relaxation. And this is all down to you. And if you choose now, I can help you to now move into an even deeper state of relaxation. You can choose this beautiful state of bliss. And from now onwards, every word I say will take you deeper and deeper into relaxation. And you may find you're becoming aware of the sounds and sensations from around you. But these two will help you to go further and further into trance. Every sound taking you deeper into relaxation and every sensation taking you further into bliss. And maybe today you're wondering what scenery I'm going to bring to you. What visualizations and peaceful things I'm going to describe. And maybe today, as we're waiting for the spring, you may be thinking about those glorious summer days and thinking about the beach and thinking about that calming blue of the sea. And maybe as soon as I reminded you of the beach in summer, your mind instantly wanted to take you there. To bring you to that horizon with its deep blue sea meeting the light blue sky. And your thoughts might be drawn as soon as I said sky to fluffy clouds scattered within the blue and to breathing in that fresh salty air and to hearing the gentle swooshing of the waves. Take some deep breaths and continue to relax. And maybe now you're thinking of that deep golden sand beneath you. And maybe you're imagining your feet sinking a little into that warm sand. Now you've put your awareness onto your feet and you've become aware of them. You can feel your feet beginning to relax. And because you thought of your feet and you wanted them to relax, they did just that. And now, you can push that relaxation upwards, up through your ankles, through your calves, your knees, your thighs, breathing deeply and sinking further and further into relaxation. Allowing that relaxation now to rise up to your stomach, to your chest, to your neck, to your head, so that every part of you deepens into relaxation with every single breath. And just relax even further now, allowing that beautiful, pleasant feeling to spread all across your body, so that every muscle and nerve now grows 
so loose and relaxed. And so your arms are limp and relaxed, just like a rag doll, peaceful and content, so calm, so safe. Every breath, every word, every beat of your heart taking you further into relaxation. And you can feel the sand beneath your feet now as you look out at that beautiful, calm sea. In a moment, I'm going to help you to feel 10 times the relaxation you feel right now. And I'm going to do this by counting from 10 down to 1. So that when I say 1, you will feel 10 times more relaxed. Are you ready? Let's begin. 10. Breathing in that cool, salty air now as you look at the horizon. 9. Feeling the warmth of the sun on your skin. 8. And the gentle warmth of the sand underneath your toes. 7. As your feet sinks into the sand, finding the perfect formation in the sand to support you. 6. The fluffy clouds creating shapes in the sky. 5. You become aware now of chalk rocks scattered across the sand. 4. Pieces of the cliff standing behind you. 3. Chalk cliffs, tall and strong with their jagged edges. 2. You can feel the energy of those cliffs now, almost humming. And 1. Standing on that beautiful beach, 10 times more relaxed. You feel wonderful. And you look up now at those chalk cliffs with their raggedy edges. And you wonder how with those raggedy edges they stay upright but they've been here for thousands of years. And like all nature, they aren't forever. And the tide washes pieces of them away, but they're there, holding and strong. And become aware now of your own spine as it holds you your spine that's been with you your whole life and become aware of your hips and become aware of right at the base of your spine so that if you looked just at your skeleton this would be the point where your spine ends and where your hips meet your legs and if you looked at this you may wonder how you stay upright but like the cliffs, there's so much more. And every part of your body, your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons, all of these work together to create perfection. Just like the cliffs. And at the base of your spine is your root chakra. And you can draw energy into your body from here. So listen now to that hum of the chalk cliffs. Focus on the sound and use it to draw energy into your body via the base of your spine. And as that energy draws up and into you, allow a little of it to just melt away any tension you're holding in your hips. 
And now bring your awareness onto the sand. That sand that sits right at the base of the cliffs and that reaches to the sea as it swells in and out. The sand that's made of earth and dampened by water. The sand that connects the sea to the land and connects the element of water to the element of earth. Look at the patterns swirling across the sand, creating ripples and ridges, patterns left by the tide as it caresses it, transforming. And the energy we bring up from our root chakra becomes pure potential at our sacral chakra. It's shapeable and mutable. It's both male and female and neither. We can be whatever we choose to be and we can continually change that. So feel that potential and feel the strength of what may be, of what could be and what might be. And let that channel be open from the root chakra to the sacral and let it vibrate with that fluidity. Ma. And now bring your attention to the sea and to water. To those gentle ripples in and out across the shoreline. And those ripples may seem random. Sometimes they reach your toes and sometimes they land far from you. Sometimes they come so far up they force you to jump back laughing. But the tides are always following where they need to go. Water is the energy that we draw up in our bodies, that we manifest. And we can see our emotions manifesting through our body in shivers, in tears, in smiles. And we hold our emotional core in our stomach to bring the energy up through the channel of your spine to this chakra. And take a moment to focus on your emotions. If there's any frozen emotion or any emotion you would like to release, then you can choose to release it now. Let the gentle ripple of the tide neutralize and take that tension from you. Da. And the sea as it meets the wind becomes waves. And our emotions, when they meet the intellect of air, manifests energy. See that deep blue sea now, churned up by the wind into crashing waves. Feel the sprinkles of sea upon your face and hear the roar of the sea. And then watch that sea begin to settle. Waves are powerful. We can harness the energy of the wind and the sea and we feel this energy within the heart chakra where the emotion of our stomach meets the intellect of the throat chakra. And the power of the heart keeps us alive and functioning and yet it also keeps us connected and the heart is connected to the lungs and breath regulates the heartbeat and we can use each other, ourselves and other individuals to regulate and we can use the roaring of the tides to breathe to. We can feel them like a heartbeat. Bring that energy up to your heart chakra and breathe with the sea. 
choosing to regulate and to feel calm. So and the wind, air. We can't see air, but we can see it and hear it and feel it in the movement it creates in water, in seeds, in trees, in feathers. We can see it gently pushing the clouds around and we can see it picking up and sprinkling the tiny particles of sand around. An air like the wind can be seen in decisions. We can see it in the words we use. It exists in ideas, in thoughts, in rumination. But until it's spoken, it moves no branches. It picks up no sand. So bring the energy up to your throat chakra and feel that open. Feel the openness within your throat. Feel it clear and allow yourself the room to make your air and your thoughts visible with words. An air is necessary to manifest fire, to spark and to carry. And the sparks of fire are picked up in the wind and they dance and they can be carried off in many directions. And the mind doesn't always choose where the sparks land. That channel that runs through your chakras connects with the bottom of your brain, just at the base of your skull. And that's the place that senses danger. And those sparks allow us to act quickly, faster sometimes than our thoughts can become words faster than our cognitive ability to make a decision. So focus in on this channel now and feel the energy rise up to the third eye chakra, to our intuition, and thank it for its work. Promise to listen to your instincts. And in return, your instincts will trust you to make the right decisions. Feel that connection. Soothe. So. And so sparks become fire. Flickering flames dancing faster than your vision can keep up with. Oranges, yellows, reds, crackling, shimmering. Fire is action, deliberate, chosen action. Manifestations of the decisions we made with air. Guided by the emotions of water. Created from the energy of earth. Bring that fire up through your body and into the crown chakra which sits just above your head. And decide where now to channel that energy. Hung. And as the flames channel the energy of the earth, Feel the perfect balance of the elements regulating your nervous system, creating calm and connection. And as the energy of the earth rises through the elements, it becomes solid. That raw energy drawn up by the root chakra, shaped with the potential of the sacral chapter, 
with the emotion of the stomach chakra and the contradiction of the heart chakra, with the decisions of the throat chakra, the intuition of the third eye chakra, before being focused by the will of fire. And that energy becomes forged, becomes metal, glass, fired clay and rock. And so begins the cycle. Earth to water, to air to fire, to earth to water, to air to fire. And the balance of these elements becomes co-regulation becomes the healing force of nature, connection. Feel yourself breathe with the tides, with the hum of the cliffs, with the wind blowing through your hair and with the heat of the sun. And enjoy that balance. And now let that balance spin into whiteness, into resting potential and become aware of your body once more as you take some deep breaths. And now I'm going to bring you back to your everyday consciousness. And I will do this by counting from one up to five. Are you ready? You will use these numbers to reorientate yourself. <clears throat> and on the count of five, your eyes will be fully open. And you will feel fully alert and contented and fully awake and ready to continue with your day. You will feel completely rested and rejuvenated and be feeling wonderful about yourself inside and out. Let's begin. One, slowly, calmly, easily and gently returning to your full awareness once again. Two, feeling completely rested and refreshed and ready to continue your day. Three, from head to toe, feeling wonderful inside and out, physically fresh, mentally balanced and emotionally calm. Four, your eyes begin to feel sparkling clear and fresh. And five, eyes wide open, fully aware and feeling wonderful. So hopefully you'll be feeling lovely and balanced after that guided self-hypnosis session. So now it's time to spend a little time really thinking about this habit and spending this time now looking at really uncovering the realities of it. So good luck with this step and I will see you next time for step two, embrace. <laughs>